Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey. You are here. You have found it. The Window Cleaning Podcast. This is WCR Nation. And I thank you for checking us out. Now, if this is your first time watching or listening, what's up? Uh, thanks for checking us out. We're in uh, episode 70s something. And uh, go back and watch or listen to a bunch of other ones. They don't all suck as bad. Um, <laughs> hopefully you fix something out of them. But uh, if you are one of the elite, one of the cool kids, one of my favorite people who order from me, but you also watch every episode, thumbs up on every video, and you comment, and you've written a review on iTunes, any of that stuff, what's going on. It is because of you that I get to eat name brand hot dogs on occasion in a bun. So things are pretty good. Uh, No, thank you guys. Uh, Really, truly, truly thanks for putting orders in. I say this uh, all the time, but uh, it's amazing sometimes when you guys just uh, call or text me and you're like, hey, everything's in the cart. I want you to get credit for it. I mean, that really really means a lot Uh, remember i am just talking into a you know empty computer whole camera screen so it does mean a lot Uh, thanks for that thanks for everybody who texts me every week too and just says hey great episode i loved it i hated it whatever i really appreciate it Uh, if you want to be one of the cool kids one of the elite uh you can text me at 862-312 2026, that is my cell. You can also call me and uh, we'll make it happen. So, uh, what's going on? Uh, some shout outs that I want to do this week. Uh, first and foremost, Cameron Clark, what's going on? Uh, Philip Humes, what's going on, man? Uh, biggest fan. Uh, he's in the Bahamas. So, this episode is not going to really be like, y- you can still listen, but it's not going to be uh, aimed at you. <laughs> and uh, Jeremiah Gibson, what's going on, man? Uh, thank you guys, uh, for, uh, uh, everything you do for me. Um, also the winner, winner chicken dinner this week is Adam Davies. Adam, man, what's going on? Uh, all you gotta do is send me your information via email, josh at window cleaning resource, and I will get you out your swag bag and your $50 credit for the store. So, uh, yeah, do that. If you want to win every single week, we do a giveaway. All you got to do is comment down below. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to click that thumbs up. I really, really, really just want to see us hit 50 thumbs up. So if you're watching on YouTube right now, three seconds, go ahead and click that thumbs up. Three, two, one. There. Okay. Good. I want to hit 50. I don't know why. It means nothing but just like 50 high fives. It'd be awesome. So anyway. This week, we are going to be talking about something that I'm very passionate about. Very, very, very passionate about, and that is Winter Sucks. Now, the name of this episode is Winter Sucks, uh, but it could have been Winter Blows. Uh, Winter is a sassy bitch. Um, I hate winter. Um, It might actually change (laughs) from when you actually watch this, but there's lots of things about winter that I have to say just horrible, horrible things because I hate it so very, very much. Why, you might ask? I like snowboarding. I like sledding or, or snowmobiling. That's awesome. I do too, but I don't want to live in it. I don't want to run a seasonal business. Everything we do deals with water, by the way. Pressure washing, window cleaning, gutter cleaning, uh, pure water cleaning, roof cleaning. It's all water, man. And if you live in an area that gets super cold and you get the cold, uh, dead grasp of winter, then this is just kind of a complain fest, but it's also a little bit to kind of sit back and think about it. But why are you doing a winter episode now when it's October? Because, because people have gotten snow already. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, Alberta, uh, like Canada's gotten snow, Wisconsin's gotten snow, where I'm originally hailed from. Uh, a bunch of states have gotten snow. Colorado, I believe, has gotten snow. Like, there's just snow already. And uh, snow is fun to play in, but not fun to live in. That's absolutely, absolutely. And it's really, really not fun to have a seasonal business that deals with water when you get in the temperatures. Now, let me give you kind of a little backstory here. About three years ago, I, um, I decided... That I hate winter. It was June, right? You know, uh, 
late, mid to late June when Wisconsin is crawling out of the uh, winter, if you will. And I remember it just being like an 80 degree day and the sun was out and I instantly stepped out of the car just felt amazing. I said, ah, I love this. And then I thought, oh yeah, that's right. Like we have not gone trick or treating with my kids a few times because it was sleeting. So I'm like just a couple months away from this all happening again. And I decided winter is not for me. I don't want that. It just happens to be that we moved down to North Carolina very shortly after that because I have young kids and I can't be a snowbird when they're still in <laughs> in middle school, elementary school at the time. Like, uh, that would probably suck for them if I just disappeared for a few months or lots of months. Because in winter, in Wisconsin, winter in a lot of places lasts forever. And in theory, uh, like I've mentioned before, is things shut down as of Thanksgiving and they are basically dormant until April, May, we're starting to kind of really pick up. April, you start getting some stragglers. Like, that is a long time. So what do you do in the winter when you live in one of these craptastic places? Because there's still, you have to, they have to have windows clean, right? And yes, for all of you people who are out in California or in the desert or or in uh, uh, Arizona areas that, you know, you guys get to work year round, that's awesome. High five to you. I can work year round here in North Carolina. There's like a couple weeks that it sucks, but I just put on, I put sleeves on. No sleeves? I just put sleeves on. Boom. Winter. But, um, yes, there's still things cleaned. And, yes, like people, when I say that it kind of shuts down, everybody's like, what? I still clean in December and January and February. I know. I did too. But um, it's very, very low key. It's not predictable. So you have to kind of plan around that. Now, one of the big things that we did in Wisconsin, or still do, I should say, is plow. Plowing. Let me just explain this. I want to do a whole episode on just plowing, but that's not really fair because not everybody gets it, right? But plowing sucks. Plowing sucks. Oh, you made so much money. Yeah, kind of. Plowing is really nice when it does snow, you make good money. Now, we had, before I left a few years before that, we had like 22 snowfalls in the month of December. Yeah, we made bank. But that also is 22 days of plowing that we had to then work around window cleaning and everything else that we had to do. So that kind of sucked also. It was a lot of work, but it sometimes can work out. The downside to it is, is that all year long... You need to drive full size, bigger size truck. So the rest of the year, even when I'm not plowing, I got to drive around, you know, full size trucks and 2,500s at least if you really want to have a better plowing truck. So that sucks. Um, But with plowing, you are mother nature's whipping boy. You basically work when she tells you you work. So you don't know when, you don't know if it's going to actually happen because a lot of times when it snows... The snow happens at night and then stops around 2 a.m. That's really pretty common where we were from. I don't know if it's like that everywhere. But you got to wake up and check anyway. If it didn't snow, you look outside and go, oh, crap, it didn't snow. Go back to bed. But if it did snow and you're like, it's still snowing heavy, checking radars, all of a sudden you're the meteorologist. You're up at 2 a.m. trying to stare at this stupid map like, okay, well, it looks like we got another like 30 minutes, hour or so. We should set everybody up to meet. Uh, everybody's going to meet at 2, which means... We're a little bit behind, so we're going to have to do breakfast until so that we don't start too stinking early. Like, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. So you can plow in the wintertime to subsidize income, or you can do uh, Christmas lights, which is another really, really big one. If you want to know more about that, I talked with Josh Trees uh, all about Christmas lights, and uh, it was an awesome, awesome kind of learning experience for the Christmas light installation side of it. Um, everybody yells too. You don't call it. You don't call it holiday lighting. Well, what holiday are you lighting for? You're lighting for Christmas. Like, if you if you are doing it or whatever religion you are, you could still make money on someone else's religion, right? So there you go. Uh, it was actually pretty good. I didn't get uh, any. I had someone tell me uh, that works here. Yeah. I thought I'd tell you who, but they're like, whoa. Whoa, you shouldn't do that episode because there is a ton of JWs in this industry. And there are, but here's the same thing is that everybody was really good. I didn't get any hate mail from it, uh, so there you go. 
But anyway, that's an option, right? You can make money doing that. You then are working huge in November, December, January, and February taking stuff down. But in Wisconsin, everything just freezes and you're on lockdown until March when everything thaws out where you can actually take lights down. So you have to think of that. And then you have to store them. So you need the room for that. And then you have to... It's a whole thing too. So there's lots of different things. But each of these little programs is you need to think about. You got to do it now. Now is the time where you're setting everybody up. You're even a little hair too late. Preferably we would have started this a month ago. But I just didn't have it in me to talk winter. But here's the thing. In winter time, the biggest thing that comes from winter. The reason winter sucks in general. No matter if you get snow or you don't. Is the freezing temperatures. The freezing temperatures when you use water. Eliminates the use of water and it also destroys equipment so you have to be careful when it comes to freezing temperatures now snow is cool like you're like oh snow i'm not working today but if snow's out then your temperatures are not conducive to cleaning the thing that people think about a lot of times especially these sneaky ones that come up especially this time of year being someone who sells supplies and replacement parts is this time of year we're getting a lot of calls of like people like oh Everything froze. Last night we got, it was cold. I didn't know it was going to be cold and it froze and now I got stuff broken. Now, it's really going to freeze hard to break some like membranes and RODI systems and that's more of a spring thing when people kind of find out that, you know, everything did break and crack over the winter. But this time of year, it's a big surprise. I know guys with tanks, uh, water lines and things have frozen in uh, skid units and it's just not, it's just not awesome in general. So you have to keep an eye on freezing temps. Now my rule of thumb, because we did fleet cleaning for a long time, I don't do fleet cleaning anymore. Fleet cleaning for us was just a little bit past kind of the experience of, of just home based, you know, or a business base. It was kind of its own thing. So I didn't do it. But with fleet cleaning, you have to clean every couple days. We had uh, fleets every single day of the week, but one every single day of the year, except for, of course, uh, holidays, we'd have to move things around. And then uh, in the winter time, it would be dependent on temperatures. So even if the sun is out in the middle of the day, and you can get above freezing, you could technically clean. The downside is, is the water you're using to clean gets on the ground. And then if you have it freeze, you are in a world of hurt because someone will slip on it. Not because it's slippery, but because they see money signs in ice. Ice is like the biggest liability for any, be a plower one time, you'll you'll hear it. People are more willing to pay for salt in general because then they know they can't get sued for people slipping and falling. It's, it's awful. So the big thing when we would do truck lots is that it would have to be 30, uh, 35 degrees overnight was our our cut off which we had weeks of no work that's just what's going to happen if the sun is out and the midday temperature uh can get warm enough then we would we would clean but the downside is in winter too in a lot of areas the sun is not going to be doing a lot of um evaporation on the water the water is going to sit there and then you're stuck we had uh, semis that had uh, doors frozen shut and things like that we used heat but of course the heat as soon as it touches anything's not hot anymore so yeah so it sucks the other thing with water feeding is the same thing if you're putting water up there the motion of water keeps it from freezing when you're close to temperature but where does the water go if it's all over the ground you're screwed. If it's all over the roof, okay, I guess it's not that big of a deal. But guys say, well, what do I do during the winter with this water fed system? You bring it in your closet and you put it in your house and you keep it there. And then every couple weeks, you know, run water through it if you want. Uh, that stops a lot of bad stuff from happening from your system. Keep it inside, bring it inside. But you're not going to be window, you know, you're not going to be pure water cleaning in uh, 20 degree temperatures. Now, a little bit about Wisconsin is the two or three years before I left, every year the low that year was negative 55. We hit it twice or three times. Like negative 30s with a wind chill is doable all the time. Negative 55 with a wind chill is like middle of the night, super crappy cold. That's how cold it gets. Now, everybody's different. I'm not trying to play that game, but. You cannot do anything anytime around then because if it's that cold, the most it warms up to is like negative <laughs> negative 40, uh, right? You can't clean. And the other thing with pure water is the equipment itself. You have motion, but you have filters and membranes. 
just like pressure washing, if you have this stuff sitting out and it does freeze, a hard freeze is going to damage the membrane hugely. It's going to break all the housings, the plastic PVC housings on these things do not stand up from the expansion of water. Um, you're just going to have a bunch of damage, so it just isn't worth it. But you can still clean traditionally. Now, with traditional window cleaning and temperatures is I would use um, windshield washer fluid. Now, I know there's lots of debate. You can use lots of different things for that. I don't want to have to ground a drum of, um, you know, uh, methanol uh, and and hope it doesn't blow up, right? I just didn't really want to deal with that. It's just not super available. Like windshield washer fluid, we buy it by the case. And I'm seeing guys posting pictures already. They're finding deals on this stuff. They're just buying tons of it. I'm sorry you don't live in North Carolina, but that's one of the big things that you have to do. Now, windshield washer fluid... Every brand's a little bit different. I think like the pink stuff goes down even more. But we'll say negative 22 is what it would say. It was good down to negative 20 or negative 22 or some weird number. Now, that's not quite right because you're mixing it with other things. So running it straight with no soap or no water, I guess. But what we would do is mix it 50-50 um, with water and soap. Um, and then if it was really, really cold, we'd put more in because sometimes you just have to get the job done, right? It does not do as great a job. It just doesn't, but here's the thing in winter. If you lived through winter in window cleaning, you do not have to do uh, as perfect of a job because you're just going to get salted and flushed up anyway. So it doesn't do quite as good of a job, but if you have to, you can do it that way. And Just try to detail as best as you can. But that's traditional gear. Now, if it gets in a frame, glass and frames are always colder or hotter than what it is, right? Middle of summer, it could be 80 out, but that window's 110. Same thing in winter. If you are, you know, 34 degrees here, that glass is going to be like 20. Well, in 20, you know, you're going to have a lot bigger difference, especially when the wind's blowing and things like that. And you're putting down such a thin layer when you're scrubbing, you'll see it, you'll, you'll scrub, everybody's done this, you scrub and you watch the crystals form behind it. And you're like, oh, crap. And you go out and get straight windshield washer fluid, dump it on the window and try to quick squeegee it off so that you don't have to scrape that window, right? That sucks, but that's something that you can do. Winter time in general, you have to plan for all this stuff and now's the time, like I said. So if you're going to go buy stuff, go to Sam's Club, Costco, whatever, and buy windshield washer fluid you can also get it in 55 gallon drums but again that's just a little bit more inconvenient i guess than having just jugs of these things uh, be careful with this stuff too it's not uh not super conducive to uh health uh on that side of things but that is what you can and can't really do you have to plan for this and remember certain things get done the other big one is gutters uh, we did gutter cleaning as much as I absolutely love gutters. It's the worst job that we could possibly do is gutter cleaning, unless you have a gutter vac and something to make it amazingly easy like that. But when a gutter, which is filled with wet leaves, freezes, which it's up high, you're getting lots of wind, you're getting blown around where it may be even colder up there because there's more wind than it is down there, you're going to have gutters start to freeze. Now, the big thing with gutters is it is a seasonal time. You can only clean gutters when gutters are dirty and all the leaves are down. People try to wait till the last second. I try to schedule gutters uh, early enough that you don't have that problem because it really does suck having to go back and clean gutters in spring that you didn't get to in fall. But it happens, so you have to remember that. And then we keep a float board. A float board for us is just a whiteboard with jobs that don't have dates. So uh, gutter cleaning is one of them. Uh, exteriors on casement crank out style houses and things, that's one of them where no one has to be home and we can fit them in in any pockets. So somebody cancels or we have extra time or we are in that area, we can pick those off. So you're going to have a really full float board for winter with um, gutters. And if it does warm up for a couple days, get out there and get those gutters done because it's better to do it then. In the middle of crap storm winter, if you can, then it is in spring when you're busy with other things and windows. Fill up the time when you can. That is the service side of things. Now, the other side of it is if you are working, because route still has to get done, right? If you are a, a route person like I am, love route, uh, in the winter time, route is going to keep you afloat. You're going to have some kind of income when you go a whole week without having a customer, right? 
Now you're using windshield washer fluid, first and foremost. You guys know that. But um, on that side of it, you still need to be comfortable yourself. So we kind of come into a new one of like what type of equipment to have. So when we get to this time of year, we plan on all the equipment we have. If you have Carhartts, which is a big, big fan of Carhartt type jackets where they're canvas style, you know, they don't rip, they don't uh, stain. They're just really, really durable work coats. If you're going to get them logoed, lettered, if you're going to get embroidery or any of that stuff, get it done now because it is going to be start getting cold. If you don't and you just let people wear whatever they want, you're not going to look all year. You try to look uniformed and presentable and then winter comes and you don't have that gear, all of a sudden it's like, oh, you guys don't look like a squad anymore. You just don't. So go and get that coats. But the big thing with the coats is hats. I always, always, always had beanies that were embroidered. Uh, I always had uh, coats and then gloves. Every employee of yours, including yourself, is going to want different types of gloves. Now, uh, I just sold gloves just before I started doing this, right? Uh, this episode. And the big thing with gloves is you have to find the ones that you can work in well. Because there's a lot of gloves out there that are amazing. They're so warm. They're so great. Again, Philip, I'm not talking to you in the Bahamas, right? But there are gloves out there that are just so nice and warm, but they're giant. It's like having boxing mitts on. Well, you can't detail a window like that. So you have to find a happy medium of like, what's the thickest glove that I can so it's nice and warm, but you still have that mobility. And a couple of the really great products that are out there are the Seal Skins. This is the most popular one, I imagine. Uh, I don't know the specs on those uh, for what they're rated down to, but the other ones are the Winter Plus gloves, which are like insulated mechanic style gloves. Both of those I like. There are other gloves that are just so bulky, you can't get your finger with your towel kind of in the corner. It just doesn't really work. And then you're just fumbling around with these big giant gloves on. So you have to find them. Some people are okay with that. They would rather be super warm. And I, I know guys that wear mittens. Have you ever seen those giant uh, igloo style mittens? There's the, um, I don't remember the name, but they're giant mittens. You can wear those too. And then you're popping your hand out every time you want to do something, popping it back in. But you have to find out what works for you. Even a simple pair of standard mechanics gloves, you can get a Harbor Freight for like 10 bucks. They work to kind of keep the cold off your hand, but they're not waterproof. Once they're wet, they're garbage. You're, you're then holding that cold on you. It's a lot of things to think about there in the apparel. The other side of it is if you're doing uh, route work, you're cleaning the outside and the inside. So if you're dressed like a snowman, or uh, you're in your uh, I'm going sledding suit, right? You got your uh, onesie on like a Christmas story and you walk into a building, you're going to sweat your butt off. You're going to sweat and be miserable and then go back out in the cold completely sweaty. So there's like big things. Okay, do I wear a really nice coat so that I can have a t-shirt underneath? When I go into a place, I can take my coat off, set up down in the corner by my bucket out of the way, of course. Now I have my logo t-shirt on, but yet I'm comfortable, right? You have to kind of plan for all of that. Planning for all that just means getting your apparel in line. Apparel is a big one, especially if you're going to be kind of dressed a certain way all year. Winter is one of them. So you have to kind of do that. You have to be prepared. Again, the temperatures is the reason that winter sucks, but everything that kind of goes along with it has to be accounted for. The other big thing with the winter time is finding other things to do with your time. Now, some guys are going to come in here and say this phrase. They're going to say something along the lines of, well, instead of finding other things to do, I'm going to just work hard or doing, yeah, okay, neat. Like, that's cool. If you can do windows all year round full, you know, 40 hours a week, that's awesome. High five, comment down below uh, and let me know. And that's super cool, man. Like, you're one of the lucky ones. Understand that. But for everybody else, when it slows down, you have to still take your time and do something. Now, a lot of guys will do close. They'll, they'll shut down shop. I know somebody's closing on the 7th of December. That's their shutdown date. Uh, I know other guys that close down. They just shut down and they, they're done for three months. They just go sit on their thumb, play video games, and, and that's their thing. They've earned it. That's cool. But if, you're not, if you didn't plan for that, you cannot do that because there has to be finances that have to be acquired throughout the rest of the year set aside so that you're able to then spend it on those three months. You know your expenses and everything because everything else continues. If you have employees and they're on seasonal layoff, 
fine, how many of them are coming back? Are they happy in layoff? Are they pissed at you? Are there a lot of different things. But you have to plan all year for that. That is not something to figure out now. You know right now if you're going to work this winter or if you're going to play video games, right? Just saying. But if you are finding other things to do with your time, the biggest thing I can possibly tell you, and you're already doing it because you're listening or watching this show, is go and watch and listen and learn and just read and view and YouTube the crap out of everything window cleaning. Go on every forum and every Facebook group. Go watch Journey of an Entrepreneur. That's an awesome podcast. Go check out Fluff Daddy. Go check out Steve-O. Uh, go watch Window Cleanse and all those guys. You just, you know, Joe the Window Cleaner. Those guys that are doing that type of video, their content may go up in the wintertime, but we are very, very... We watch our, our, our views and uh, interactions super close. In wintertime, it always goes up. And I'm going to tell you something that's funny. The month of December is actually still a crappy month for views and things on our end. And the reason is, I think, is not everybody's super busy, but everybody's like, oh, okay, woo, let's just get through the holidays. Let's just get through the holidays. And then, and then the beginning of the year starts and they're all fresh and bushy-eyed and they're like, all right, let's do this. And then you see January skyrocketing views. January, February, March, people are just binge-watching, learning, forum posting, Facebooking, watching and listening to WCR Nation, right? Maybe. Um, but they're doing all that. And it's in the winter time when you're bored out of your gourd and video games have gotten boring and you really, really have an opportunity to spend eight hours a day like you would cleaning windows, watching and learning. Like you could think about that. If you spend eight hours a day for an entire week on YouTube, on the forums, on Facebook, which a lot of you guys do, but you're on the, all the wrong parts, but just window cleaning, pressure washing, new services, whatever, and you just focused on that and you did just as much time in that as you do cleaning, you would be gods the next spring, wouldn't you? Like, that's your time. You have nothing but time. You go and learn and and just and find out everything you possibly can. You learn a ton. But the downside that comes with learning or going on the forums is being a wintertime troll. Did you hear me? Wintertime troll. Don't, for the love of Pete, be a wintertime troll. This is the worst part about the season. When guys are busy, um, let's, let's, go, let's go off topic just a hair. Do you notice in Facebook groups, which by the way, there's like 10, 12 of them that I have to be in all the time. Just We monitor them and if somebody's got questions, we want to jump on and be as helpful as possible, right? I have to look and be on all these. Even, it'll be, it'll be the busiest spring, right? May, the busiest month of the year, May, June. There's guys that are on these Facebook groups all day long talking about, yeah, this is how much money I make, this is how awesome I am, blah, blah, blah. But you see them posting every 30 minutes or less. You're not working. You're doing that. And you're just hoping no one calls you out on your crap. Guys have gotten called out before on the crap. If you're going to be full of crap, you're full of crap, right? So don't be that troll who does that in the wintertime. The, the worst thing about my job, what I have to do, is that in the wintertime, I'm going to have to kick people out of groups. Like, we try so stinking hard. I We try, we could go all year and not kick somebody out of the group. Like, we let a lot of things pass in a lot of the Facebook groups. Pro window cleaning, one of them. Water fed uh, window cleaner, that type of thing. Those groups, we try to just let anything. It's self-regular. Like, just be a nice person. But when you are relentless, relentless, and you're a troll. You have nothing better to do. You ruin it for everybody else. No one wants to hear your crap. You're not funny when you try to be stupid and like yell at people and and just purposely start crap. You're just a troll who's bored and we get that. But then you're not in the group. And then when you do want to be serious and learn stuff or watch stuff or be in the kind of community, you're not. So don't be a troll. Don't be a troll. And in fact, this week, if you want to buy any type of window cleaning supplies, remember, you've made it this far. You get a code that nobody else gets because they didn't listen this far. The code this week for 5% off everything in the store, anything, if you order from me, is don't be a troll. 
Or, you know what? Say, I'm not a troll. That's the code this week, because I'm not a troll. If you want to order anything, shoot me a text. Say, hey, what's up? It's all in my cart. I'm not a troll. And I will make sure to give you 5% off. Um, it's a killer deal. Just because you watched, you're one of the nation. You are one of the cool kids and one of the elites who's going to let me purchase their supplies for them. And I want to be your rep. I really, really, really do. I want everybody to be my clients. But anyway, uh, my number, if you do want to call or text, is 862 312 2026. Um, that's a cell phone. So shoot me a text. Give me a call. The only thing I can't get is pictures that way. So if you have sent them, I'm not ignoring you. I just can't get pictures, right? So go do that. Uh, check it out this winter. All the other good, uh, content creators that I mentioned, uh, make sure that you thumbs up this video. Like I said, look down right now. If you're watching this on YouTube, look down in the bottom, uh, right hand corner. There's a little thing. See a thumbs up, thumbs down. Hopefully there's zero thumbs down, but there's always a couple. And there's lots of thumbs up, but yours is not there yet. Click that. Give me a thumbs up. That would be amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, until next week, don't freeze your butt off. We still got a couple months here, but just plan away. Be a squirrel with your money until winter. And go out there and be epic.